Just over an hour and a half north of Albuquerque on New Mexico 502 is the town of Los Alamos. This small and still fairly remote city is remembered by many to be the birthplace of the atom bomb, for it was the headquarters of the top secret Manhattan Project that led to its creation. Los Alamos continues to be a mecca of scientific development and ingenuity, and the Bradbury Science Museum located in the middle of downtown honors the scientific legacy of the Los Alamos National Laboratory. I'm meeting with the laboratory historian Alan Carr at the museum to get more insight into this chapter of Los Alamos' history. At that time, what was it like? You know, you had the Einsteins of the world and the Oppenheimers. How did they come into the, the picture and how did that kind of, that fervency of like, we need to do something now, you know, to stop this war, how did that come to be? When fission was produced in 1938 and interpreted as fission in 1939, that happened in Germany. Oh. And so this was Hitler's Germany. The, the, the Nazis were on the verge of launching World War II. And so this was of significant concern to scientists around the world. So they self-imposed secrecy on fission research. They said, we're not gonna publish this stuff anymore because we don't wanna help the Germans. They may have a lead on us already. And so Albert Einstein, at the urging of a scientist named Leo Szilard, uh, both of them from Axis countries, mm -hmm. Hungary and Germany, right. uh, Szilard urged Einstein to write to President Roosevelt and warning him about what this could possibly mean. That under certain circumstances, you could build an atomic bomb and the Germans have all of the ingredients that they needed to build one. That was our first goal during the Manhattan Project. We have to beat the world. We have to beat Adolf Hitler mm -hmm. to a nuclear weapon. That was the kind of pressure that they were working on early right. on. Switching gears a little bit about where we are right now in the museum. Right. So what kind of um, things were they trying to capture um, about Los Alamos and the Manhattan Project in this place. One of the questions I frequently get asked is why is it, or, or who's Bradbury? People right. have heard of Robert Oppenheimer. Uh, Norris Bradbury, going back to your question, mm -hmm. he was our second director and he was the director from 1945 to 1970. Oh, so wow. for 25 years he was the director. And the wartime laboratory was an anomaly. I mean it was, a, it was just, the, the laboratory itself was built as quickly as possible to build nuclear weapons right. as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. It changed, it was rebuilt, the community was rebuilt. These were all made a permanent community under Norris Bradbury when he, mm -hmm. when he was the director. Here at the museum, you're going to see a lot of World War II displays and exhibits. That is uh, the creation story, if you mm -hmm. will, of our laboratory. That's what it came out of. Right. And I think that's what most people uh, rem remain to be fascinated mm -hmm. with is just the wartime story of the laboratory, the atomic bombs, and New Mexico's unique connection uh, mm -hmm. to that very dangerous time. Mm -hmm. But in addition to all of the World War II displays, you're going to see a lot of exhibits on technology that's been created here at the laboratory since. All right. And so mm -hmm. you'll see satellite technology, modern nuclear weapons stockpile technology, mm -hmm basic science, uh, exhibits on computing. Some mm -hmm. of the world's most powerful computers have been here at Los Alamos throughout the years as well. And I think in looking at all the exhibits, it, it helps folks to realize the laboratory didn't just go away, right. that there have been a lot of things that have been d developed here that have changed all of our lives. To take a step further back in time and in the great outdoors of the Pajarito Plateau, pay a visit to neighboring Bandelier National Monument to explore the ruins of ancestral Pueblo people but before heading out of town, grab a bite at Blue Window Bistro. Serving up both lunch and dinner, this restaurant has been pleasing locals and travelers alike for over 30 years. 